Hi, my name is Yejia. I make free crochet tutorials on my channel here, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see more. You can also follow me on all other platforms as well to see more daily and regular updates. Also, I have a Patreon now. If you would like to support me and my crochet work, you like what I do here, you like all the free crochet tutorials, please consider supporting me over there. It's about $5 a month. You will keep me caffeinated, buy me a cup of coffee every month, keep me crocheting, and I will continue providing those free tutorials for you, as well as receiving a shout out at the end of a video. But today I'm gonna show you how I crocheted this off the shoulder sweater for my birthday. And this is what she's looking like. I think she's perfect. I still have some ends to weave in, but if you have any questions during the tutorial, make sure to ask me in the comments below. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that we are going to do is create our slip knot, and to create a slip knot, you're going to hold your yarn just like so, twist, and then pull up your working yarn. If you don't quite understand what working yarn means, it just means the yarn that's coming from your yarn ball. I'm going to go ahead and slip that slip knot onto my hook, tighten that up. And for myself, I am going to chain about 40 chains. This number can be different for you depending on if you want a shorter off the shoulder panel or a longer one. It's really up to you, you can play around with it, make sure to try it on as you go. Uh, just to see what measurements you would want and so i'm gonna go ahead and start off with 40 stitches so in order to make your chains you're going to do a yarn over and then pull that up yarn over pull up and you're going to repeat this for however many chains you want your off the shoulder panel to be so I have completed 42 chains now I know that I originally said I'm going to work 40 stitches at the end of whatever stitch count you want, you are going to chain an additional two stitches or chains. These chains are going to be what are referred as turning chains. Turning chains means that you are not going to be working in them for the entirety of the project. So these two chains, those two last chains that I've created, I am not going to be working into those. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a stitch called a yarn over slip stitch. For some people, particularly beginners, the stitch can be very difficult, particularly because it requires you to quite understand like tension and how to hold your yarn, etc, etc. An easier stitch for beginners, if you are wanting a similar knit-like effect in your sweater, um, but you just can't grasp the yarn over slip stitch, I would recommend doing a half double crochet. It'll get you pretty similar in terms of results. So I'll show you what both look like. Now those last two chains I just said are turning chains, so we are not going to be working into them. We're going to be skipping to the third chain from our hook. I'll show you guys how to do a half double crochet first, and then I'll unravel that, and then I'll show you how I do the yarn over slip stitch. So it's really dependent on you uh, if you want to do a more beginner friendly one, or you want to do slightly more intermediate. For a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into your third stitch. Now, another thing that I like to note, especially when I'm making garments, is that I like to go through the backs of my stitch, particularly in the you know, initial chain that we've created. Um, I've just found that going through the back of your stitch allows for a little bit less gapping and it makes for a really nice um, edge. In order to make a half double crochet, I'm going to insert my hook into the third stitch. This is our third stitch, and then this is the back of said third stitch. I'm gonna yarn over and pull that up, and then yarn over once more, pull through all three loops on your hook. And again, to make the next half double crochet, I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into the back of my stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over and pull all through all three and again I'm going to start off by yarning over inserting your hook yarn over once more and pull that up yarn over and pull that through so if you really prefer the half double crochet you can continue using the half double crochet to finish out your row 
However, I really like the yarn over slip stitch. I just find that in terms of technical details that the yarn over slip stitch allows for less spacing between ribbing and so it looks even more knit like <laughs> and it can be a little bit denser but still very elastic of a stitch. To do the yarn over, I'm going to yarn over and then I'm going to insert my hook into that back stitch and I'm going to yarn over again, pull that up and then pull that same yarn over through. So again, to do another yarn over slip stitch, we are going to yarn over. We're going to insert our hook into that back stitch or back of the stitch. Yarn over once more, pull that up and pull it through. Again, yarning over, inserting our hook, yarning over and pulling it through. It's kind of like a half double crochet, honestly, just kind of unfinished, if that makes sense. So like you normally in a half double crochet, you'd pull that up and then you do another yarn over and pull it through. But on this one, you're just pulling it through. And when you are doing yarn over slip stitch, like if you're like a beginner intermediate and you really want to uh, challenge yourself into using this stitch, or maybe you really like the stitch and you really want to try it, what I really highly recommend technique wise in order to do this stitch is that once you insert your hook and then you pull up your yarn over i recommend like pulling it up make sure to pull it up and then pull it through uh, just because i feel like that sort of motion allows for a more even tension throughout your project for me i always say that it's like about getting into the rhythm of your crochet so i'm just going to finish this row of yarn over slip stitches and i will meet you back up once i am done with this row. All right, so I have just finished my last stitch. This is what the end of my row is looking like. Um, and this is my 40th and final stitch. So now I'm going to be creating another two turning chains. So go ahead and chain two, turn your work. And again, those were turning chains, so we are not working into them at all. From here on out, you can either continue with your half double crochet or yarn over slip stitch like I'm doing. Whichever stitch you are using, where you are going to insert your hook is into your third loop only. Now your third loop only is this very front part of your stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and complete my yarn over slip stitch. If that doesn't make sense to you, let me kind of show you where our stitches are. Some like basic stitch anatomy, <laughs> as I like to call it. When you first start learning to crochet, you're probably putting your hook underneath your front and your back stitch. So both of those, right? It's kind of like that top braiding that you see. However, the third loop is going to be this little loop in front. So if we see that from that side, just right here. So the third loop, and then go ahead and either do your half double crochet or your yarn over slip stitch. What working into the third loop does, it is essentially like forces this braiding effect from your front and your back loops essentially uh, to one side. And so by alternating through the third loop only, you're gonna get a knit like ribbed effect. And essentially I am just going to repeat this stitch over and over and over again. I'm going to repeat this row over and over and over again until I have a panel that is long enough to stretch around my shoulders. And then once more, when I'm done with my row, I'm gonna go ahead and chain two, turn my work, and then go ahead and again through your third loop only. And as you can see, it is forcing that ribbing to, you know, either side. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna continue my panel until I have a panel that stretches around my shoulders. I think I just completed my last row for my off the shoulder panel. And I'm gonna show you what it should approximately look like if you are measuring it for yourself. So essentially, I have a very long panel. I think in total, I honestly don't really keep count of how many rows I've done. I think it's about 120. Just about, it's right around 120 rows total. I'm more so, especially when I'm doing um, a lot of repetitive 
or a lot of repeated rows, I will go off of measurements rather than um, like the number of rows, number of stitches. So anyways, I did count it. I think it's right about, uh, right about 120 rows, but what I do is I make sure to wrap it around myself and I make sure that the ends can connect. But one of my little tips when making an off the shoulder silhouette, because you wanna get the sort of measurement so that it's tight enough that it's not going to slip and slide off of you while you're wearing it, but you also don't want it too tight that you don't have like any arm movement. One of the things about this stitch specifically is that it's very elastic and so as long as you kind of have like your ends are like the sides of your panel are able to touch i don't think that it needs to like perfectly lay together if that makes sense like if you go by like this it's probably going to fit a little loose you want to be able to kind of stretch it over you and then you want to make sure that you can actually kind of do a little chicken wing dance you know <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so as you can see if i'm just kind of like laying it it's not quite touching yet i have to stretch it out a bit for it to actually connect um but that's kind of at the point that i recommend uh you get your panel to measure around okay so i've just finished my 120th ish row um in terms of measurement we are at about 32 and a half inches um and then just for reference my shoulder width like the circumference around my shoulders is just about 38 inches essentially i have a lot of negative ease um, but it's just something that I have personally found making quite a few of these off-the-shoulder silhouettes that you do want uh, quite a bit of negative ease to be able to wear comfortably so that it's not like slipping and sliding everywhere. Um, but also make sure that it's not too tight, that you're not able to like chicken wing dance as I like to call it. Um, so that, you know, you have a bit of movement there. At this point, we are going to connect our two sides of our panel together. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself those two turning chains again. And from here, I am going to be continuing my yarn over slip stitch through the third loop only in order to connect um, this side of the panel as well. And if you are using the half double crochet stitch, you can also totally do it with half double crochet stitch. If continuing the stitch and seaming together is too confusing, you can always sew it together with just like thread and needle. You can um, do single crochet seam, you can do slip stitch seam. It's really up to you. Um, at this point, it's just about connecting our panels together. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my yarn over slip stitch. I'm gonna, gonna go through the third loop, uh, just like we've been doing to create all the rows. And then now, I'm gonna go into the first stitch here where you can see this is like originally my slip knot here. You can see my end popping out here. One of the things that I like to do to sanity check is count all of my stitches and make sure that I'm going through the first, the first, second, second, third, third, etc, etc. You get it, right? I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into the entire stitch. Working through the back loop on that initial row of chains is really helpful for this reason. And it's because you have a very clear sort of braiding as to where to insert your hook when seaming your panel together. Additionally, I'm gonna go ahead and weave this end in, end in <laughs> as I go. Okay, so I've gone ahead, I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pull through, pull through, and then pull through. So again, we're going to yarn over, we're going to insert our hook underneath the third loop only, and I'm crocheting around my end in order to weave it in, insert my hook into the second stitch on the other side of the panel, yarn over, pull through, pull through, and pull through. So again, third loop only, making sure to crochet around that end, inserting my hook into the third stitch, 
yarning over and pulling through and pulling through and as you can start to see by doing so uh, we are creating a pretty seamless seam, <laughs> a very unnoticeable seam where you are connect connecting and continuing the ribbing as you are connecting. So I'm just going to continue seaming this until I am finished. So I've seamed up the sides of the panel and this is what it's looking like. I can do my little chicken dance. Okay, so to make the sleeve panel, we are going to start off with our same slip knot and go ahead and put that on your hook. Now, the sleeve panel is going to be worked in basically the exact same way the off shoulder panel was worked, which is essentially a rectangular panel of some sorts. It's just that the measurements are a little bit different. So for the sleeve, I am going to start off with 70 chains. And again, since the sleeve panel is worked up just like the off shoulder panel, we are going to do our yarn over slip stitch or your half double crochet, whichever one you're using. Um, but we are going to insert a yarn over slip stitch into the third chain from our hook. And that is this one right here. One, two, three. And I'm going to turn my yarn slightly. I'm going to turn my chain slightly and I'm going to insert my hook into the back of my stitch right there and do my yarn over slip stitch and I'm just going to continue this down the length of this chain okay so this is the end of my first row and I am going to make two turning chains just like so turn my work and then work through the third loop only whether you're doing a yarn over slip stitch or a half double crochet. Make sure to go through the third loop only. And you are just going to repeat this row over and over again until you have a panel that is large enough to wrap around your arm circumference. So I have finished both of my sleeve panels at this point. So they are rectangular panels, 70 stitches across and 40 total rows. Always make sure that you are trying it on. Make sure that you are kind of stretching it around your arm. Um, instead of it just simply laying flat, if that makes sense. You're gonna have the end of the sleeve out here be a little bit more flared because this part of your arm is most likely a little bit smaller than the upper part of your arm. And so when I'm sizing this for myself, I make sure that firstly, the length is good. And then secondly, I make sure that, um, and when you are doing the length, I would go right like about halfway of if not a little bit more than halfway up on the upper part of your arm. Just like imagine where the off the shoulder portion is going to cut you like on your shoulders, if that makes sense. And um, make sure that that length there is good enough for you. And then I would make sure that you can stretch it over your arm. So as you can see, it's not laying like perfectly flat or anything. Um, and then what that creates is more of a flared effect at the end of your sleeve. So now we are going to start making the front and back panels and they are the exact same. So just make two of these panels essentially. So the number of chains that you work with and the number of stitches that you eventually increase to, they're all really going to depend on how you want this sweater to fit, your personal measurements, whoever you're making this for, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Just for reference, like I wear about an X small to a small. And this is what I am going to do in terms of measurements and chains to create my front and back panels. Essentially what we're creating is a section on the bottom that's yarn over slip stitch, a section in the middle that's just slip stitch, and then a section on top that's yarn over slip stitch, but the top version also has shaping for your armholes. Now, if you're working half double crochets, what you can do instead is to work half double crochets and then a section of yarn over slip stitches and then again with half double crochets. Either way should work out just fine. You know, your number of rows and stitches might differ a little bit, but you can make this work with the different stitches. I've already made my slip knot and I'm gonna slip that onto my hook. And for myself personally, the measurements that I'm going with are 30 stitches on the bottom, 15 stitches for that middle like waist uh, section, the slip stitch section, and then I am going to start off with another 15 stitches for the top. But as you'll see, I'm going to be increasing in order to shape my armholes. So if we do the math, that's 30 on the bottom, 
15 on the, in the middle and then 15 on top. So that's gonna be 60 total chains plus two turning chains. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by chaining 62. Okay, so I have successfully chained 62 chains to start off. And again, those last two turning, those last two chains are our turning chains. And so we are going to skip that and we are going to start working into the third chain from our hook into the backs of our stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and continue my yarn over slip stitches just like I've been doing for the rest of the panels for the first 30 stitches. Going into the third chain from my hook into the backs of our stitches. So just right there. Okay, so now I have completed my 30 stitches that goes on the bottom part of the panel and I am going to start working 15 slip stitches and I'm also going to go through the backs of my chains just like we've been doing. So going ahead and inserting my hook, yarning over, and then pulling up. Back of the stitch or chain, yarn over and pull up. And again, if you're working half double crochets, you can totally do this as half double crochets. And then you could do this section as like yarn over slip stitch, totally fine. Okay, so now I have completed my 15 slip stitches and I am going to continue the rest of the row using yarn over slip stitches, which should be 15 more chains. Okay, I've now finished my last stitch and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself two turning chains and turn my work. Now what we are going to start doing is creating our increases in order to shape our armhole. So from here, I'm going to go and insert my hook into my very first stitch through the third loop as always. And I'm going to do my yarn over slip stitch. In order to make an increase, all you're going to do is insert your hook underneath the same exact stitch and put in an additional stitch. So now we have two stitches in that very first stitch. And then I'm going to continue my yarn over slip stitches until I reach my slip stitch section once more. If you're relatively new to crocheting and if you need a little bit more guidance, I would also highly suggest that you utilize some stitch markers or my personal favorite bobby pins in order to mark out these different sections. Um, if you're a little bit more advanced, you can start understanding like how to read your stitches. And so I don't really need that guide, but that is another tip I will share with you. So now I've reached back at my slip stitch section and the third loop only kind of really only is applicable when we're talking about stitches, um, like the half double crochet or like yarn over slip stitch. Sorry, I just, my apartment overlooks the ground and I am watching a dog wearing the cutest pajamas walking on the sidewalk. Sorry. <laughs> okay, anyways, so you might be wondering essentially, where am I supposed to put my hook in for the slip stitch section? Um, where I'm gonna put my hook in is through this part of our stitch, that little bump that you see right there. because there's not technically like a third loop to be able to put your hook through. So I put it through that like top part of my loop, right underneath here. And that's how I do my slip stitch sections. And now I'm back at my yarn over slip stitch section. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out those yarn over slip stitches for the rest of the row. Okay, so I've completed my second row and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself two turning chains, turn my work, and we're going to work up the exact same way. So again, this is the bottom of my panel, so I'm going to do my 30 yarn over slip stitches through the third loop. Just finished my yarn over slip stitch section, and then again, I'm gonna go through the tops of my slip stitch section right here and now i'm back at my yarn over slip stitch section so i'm going to continue the yarn over slip stitch section okay, so now i'm currently at my very last stitch right here and i'm not only going to put in just the one final stitch but i'm going to make yet another increase just like so 
chain two, turn your work, and you're going to make yet another increase. So you are going to continue making increases basically every single time you pass this point, which is the topmost point of your top of the panel. <laughs> Um, basically to sort of start shaping an armhole. How many increases will mostly depend on your specific measurements and how you want the fit of the sweater to be. I am going to increase until 25 total stitches. So remember I started off with 15 here. I'm going to increase to 25. And again, as soon as I'm at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give myself two stitches in the one stitch here and then you can keep going and as you can see you're starting to see those increases form so I'm just going to continue this row over and over again until I have 25 stitches on that top portion of my panel so now I have successfully increased to 25 stitches here so again I started at 15 increased to 25 and I'm going to go ahead and mark out um, this initial stitch right here. And I'm marking it just so that I know how many rows I'm going to be working. Um, from here on out, you are not going to be making any more increases. You are just going to create a section that kind of covers the majority of your chest slash back, I suppose, um, but you don't have to make any more increases. You just repeat the same row over and over and over again. So at this point, you are just going to continue working um, sections of 25, 15, and 30. Your measurements might be a little bit different, but basically you get it. We are at this point just going to work the same row over and over and over again. And as you can see, the more rows that we have worked, you can see the difference in stitches uh, from the different heights. So you see like this is the yarn over slip stitch section. This is your slip stitch section, which also is very elastic, I would like to note. Um, and then you have your yarn over slip stitch section once more. But yeah, I'm going to finish out this and then I will show you once I'm ready to create my decreases, how I create my decreases. Um, to shape the other armhole. Okay, so between here and here, I have finished 25 rows. And from now, I'm going to start decreasing in order to shape my other armhole. So in order to decrease, I am going to give myself two turning chains. And in order to decrease, what we are going to do is we're going to set up just like we've been doing. So we have a yarn over on our hook, and then we're going to go into that very first third loop only. Then you're going to yarn over and pull up. You're going to insert your hook into the next third loop only. Yarn over and then pull that yarn over through all three loops that you have on your hook. And then from here, you can go ahead and start uh, just going through your third loop as normal and complete your row. So you're just going to go ahead and complete that row and then you're going to work back up and you're going to make yet another decrease once you get back here. So every time you are at this point, you're going to now make decreases until you get to the original number of stitches that you started off with. So for myself, I started off with 15 stitches here at this top portion, right? So I'm going to decrease from my 25. I just now I have 24 here because um, I decreased one and I'm going to continue decreasing until I have 15. And again, just as a reminder, the number of rows, the number of increases and decreases and whatnot, these can all be changed according to how you want the sweater to fit you. Um, it, additionally, it can be changed for your sizing as well. This is just something that you are probably going to have to experiment with and play around with in order to find out your perfect fit. So I've worked back up this row and I am at the point where I'm going to make a decrease yet again. And again, just to show you guys maybe a little bit closer how I make this decrease. So I'm on my last two stitches, as you can see right here. And I set up my yarn over. I'm gonna insert my hook into the third loop only, right there. Yarn over and pull up. Insert my hook into the next slash last stitch. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Go ahead and make two turning chains, turn your work, 
And then yet again, we are going to make another decrease. Just like so. And then continue working down the row as normal. And as you can see by making the decreases, we're, you know, starting to see a decrease. Go figure. <laughs> But I'm gonna go ahead and continue all of my decreases until I've reached back to 15 stitches for this top portion of my panel. And then you're almost done. I will come back to show you guys how I seam all of my panels together. Okay, so I have finished both of my panels now and I'm gonna show you how I connect them. We're gonna start connecting our front and back panels now. And once this is connected, I would highly advise that you try it on, just make sure that it's fitting you the way that you want it to. Um, and then after that, we're gonna attach the sleeves, and then after that, we're gonna attach the off-the-shoulder panel. So the first thing that we're going to ensure is that the orientation of our ribbing is proper. Um, again, like if you kind of mess up on this detail, you can just you can just say it's a design detail, like if you did it on purpose. Um, but if you want to have a more like uniform looking sweater, the thing that you want to do is that I'm going to be working on the wrong side of my sweater. Basically, I'm working on the inside. And you can tell that I'm working on the inside because if you look at this, the ribbing is upside down. So the V's are pointing like that, <laughs> right? Do you see that? Like that. And my right side of my work is facing each other. And you can tell that it's the right side because the V's look like these. They're going down this way, right? We are going to create a seam right here. And then we're also going to create a seam right here. You're going to go ahead and give yourself two turning chains, just like normal, you know, and you should be looking at now the wrong side of your work. And essentially all you're going to do is you're going to continue the stitch that you have been utilizing, whether it be half double crochet, yarn over slip stitch, etc etc at this point you can also just use a slip stitch seam you can honestly just take a needle and some thread and just sew it together if you're getting really confused <laughs> um, but i like to try to like crochet most of my work um simply on the basis that i'm lazy okay anyways <laughs> The reason why I recommended working your very first row on every one of your panels into the backs of your chains is because by doing so, you give yourself a really nice obvious ribbing or like a braid right here that you can put your hook underneath in order to seam everything together. And so I'm gonna go ahead and set up my yarn over just like we've been doing. I'm gonna go through the third loop and then as you can see, I'm going to scoot you in so you can really, really see this detail. Like, as you can see, this is the first row that you did. And then right next to it, there should be a braid right here. So you are going to insert your hook underneath that braid. Just like so. And I also like to weave my ends in as I go. So that's what I'm going to do. And in order to do that, you just crochet around the end. So I'm going to go ahead and do my yarn over slip stitch. I'm kind of holding that end and I'm crocheting around it. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the very next stitch. It's right there. And then complete my yarn over slip stitch. through that third loop around that end and then inserting my hook into my very next stitch and by doing so if you look at the right side of your work this is what that seam this is what that seam is looking like so as, you can as you can tell it's pretty seamless I would say um, this is one of my favorite methods on seaming panels together and then once you've arrived to your slip stitch section, or if you've been using half double crochet, um, your yarn over slip stitch section, then you can just go ahead and insert your hook in the same place that you've been doing it. And then going ahead and inserting your hook in the other panel and continue slip stitches.
I just really like the continuity of doing seaming in this manner. Um, but there's many different ways that you can seam your panels together. If this is like incredibly confusing to you, you can just sew it together uh, either with a sewing needle and some thread or a sewing machine as well. And I'm just going to continue, as you can see, this is the seam. Whoop, there you go. That's the seam right there that we've been creating. I'm gonna continue seaming both of my panels together until I've reached the very end. So essentially this is how you seam your panels together. I'm gonna go ahead and seam both of these sides together. I'm gonna ensure that it fits me. I've been trying it on as I go, but I'm gonna just double check. And then I will be back to show you how I seam together the sleeve. Okay, so this is how I have attached my sleeve. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach it to one side of the armhole and then um, like finish seaming the actual sleeve portion up all together. This is what the right side of it looks like. There's a little bit more gapping, but it's fairly seamless, I would say. Now you are gonna be left with the other side of your armhole not connected yet, but we are gonna connect it. I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna do that. But anyways, I'll show you first how we connect this sleeve. We've got our pretty little panel here. Another thing too, um, as we are connecting this, make sure that again, the ribbing orientation is in the correct manner, proper, whatever. Um, <laughs> and basically all that means is that again, we should be looking at upside down Vs uh, in order to connect this. What we are going to do is we are going to connect, or we're gonna attach our yarn and we are going to seam first few stitches of this side of our sleeve panel to this side of our armhole. To do that, I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm going to give myself a slip knot. There we go. And just generally speaking, I actually use about 12 stitches, like the, these first 12 stitches in order to connect the arm or the sleeve panel to the armhole. And what I do is I go through the like, you know how we created this section? It's just like repeated rows, but it's like 25 stitches here. I'm gonna go, gonna go into the top of that, but it's like the last one, first or last, whatever your perspective is. And then I'm gonna go through. So the way that I have oriented my sleeve panel in order to start connecting it is that this is the end of my sleeve panel. Like this is the, this would be the last row edge. And then I'm gonna fold it in on itself so that I'm essentially starting to connect on my very first row that I've worked. So I'm gonna go underneath here. And here I'm gonna go underneath the braiding. I'm gonna go underneath this braiding right here. Um, and if you don't know what I mean, I'm basically going underneath these top stitches right here all along this line or this row and I'm going to take my slip knot and I'm going to slip that up in order to connect this I'm just going to be using a slip stitch seam all the way through from here on out um, again, if you need a little bit more room in your sleeve panel, in your bodice or whatever, or like in the armhole area, I would highly suggest to utilize, you know, half double crochet, single crochet. Um, it'll seam it just the same, you know, it'll connect it, but it'll give you a little bit more room, a little bit more stretchiness. But I'm just going to go ahead and use slip stitch seam. And then I'm going to go through and begin connecting these panels. Now, you're working into the tops of these stitches, which can be really complicated and confusing to know where to put your hook into. What I would recommend always is that I always recommend going underneath two strands of yarn, two strands of yarn in order to connect. Um, just because I find that if you only go through one, you will have kind of a strange gapping in between your panels. And it's not the end of the world. Um, 
but this is just some little design details that I like to keep in mind as I'm crocheting my work together. Okay, so I am now done connecting this side of the armhole and that is what that is looking like. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the other side of my sleeve panel here and I'm going to count out the first 12 stitches because I know that those 12 stitches will be, you know, designated to attach the other side of our armhole. I'm going to count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that is my 13th stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hook through the third loop right there and then I'm gonna go through the exact same row of like braiding ribbing that I've been attaching this armhole to and I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch all that together so again going through the third loop and I'm going through the next braid and slip stitching it all together Basically, both of my sleeves are attached. All I have to do is uh, seam this part of my armhole, as well as this part of my armhole, and then attach the off the shoulder portion. I have just some like little scrap yarn I'm using. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to attach this armhole. So from here, I'm going to start connecting the sleeve panel to where my stitch marker is essentially. like so. I'm going to start attaching and I'm essentially going to start attaching the sleeve panel to the other side of that armhole on the body panel. So I've essentially reached the end of attaching the rest of the sleeve panel to this armhole. What you might find is that you might have a little bit of gapping right here like right in that armpit area and so what I like to do at this point is like pull my yarn all the way through so that it's secured and it's not going to you know unravel and then I will take a little needle and thread that bit of yarn that I was using to connect those panels so I'm going to use this to go ahead and finish sewing up this little hole right here so you see there's a bit of a gap here. So what I'm gonna do is just start sewing that little gap closed. So now what we are going to do is basically start seaming this side up from, I would probably start actually at the armpit area and if you're going to do that, I'm gonna take my bit of yarn that I've got. Essentially what I would recommend is kind of going through um, this like middle portion down here and securing that through here and then pulling your slip knot up through there in order to like really kind of secure this area and then from here you can start actually connecting um, the panels via those stitches. If you are experiencing any sort of gapping, I would just take the ends of your yarn and go ahead and seam that gap closed. So essentially at this point, you have two options depending on how this is fitting on you. So at this point, I would highly recommend for you to try this on for size, see if it is slipping and falling like way too much or if it's just like kind of big. Like if it's only like a little bit big on you, at that point, what I would do is I would start attaching the off the shoulder panel. If it's far too large at this point, what I would recommend is you can start making a slip stitch seam at the top edge of your panel and you can skip rows like and you can like sort of start tightening up your work using a slip stitch seam 
However, for myself, this is actually fitting pretty well. It's just slightly loose on um, this top edge. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just start attaching my off shoulder panel. But again, if it's fitting way, way too big, make a slip stitch seam all across the top edge. So essentially to do that, you would go in the tops of your rows and make slip stitches. And you don't have to go through like every single row. You can skip some of those rows. Like you can, you know, go through here, go through here. This is just an example, but like as you can see by doing that, you're kind of cinching in the top edge of your sweater. And so at this point when you're seaming it all together and you're like, oh my God, it's too big. What do I do? I don't want to have to start all over again. This is definitely a very easy fix. So I wouldn't panic too much, um, but mine is fitting pretty well actually. So I'm just going to start attaching the off shoulder panel immediately. So at this point, I have actually flipped my work uh, inside out, outside in, uh, whatever. And <laughs> I'm looking at the correct orientation or the right side of my work. And this is the slip stitch that I created previously. Or the last, and right here is where I connected that last seam on the armhole. So I'm actually gonna flip it. So I'm looking at the correct orientation. Okay, so now you are going to take your off the shoulder panel and again, making sure that that orientation is correct. So for me, that is this way. And from here, what we are going to do is we are going to insert the sweater in this panel. So as you can see, I'm fitting the sweater through that panel and start to see the final shape of it forming. Isn't that wonderful? At this point, I recommend having some stitch markers on hand um, and counting out, you know, approximately where you're going to start seaming everything together. I see my obvious seam uh, from where I connected the off the shoulder panels on the side, remember? And that is going to be basically center back of my sweater. And so I am going to approximate, I'm gonna count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 ish, I suppose. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna call that about center on my back and I'm going to go ahead and mark or connect it with a stitch marker. So this is before you even start seaming, I would go around, use stitch markers to approximate, you know, about here is where this should be fitted. Um, and if you're really like detail oriented like I am, I actually just count out my rows. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 ish. So by that row, I should be at like the middle of my sleeve panel right here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and like flip my sweater. So I'm looking at it on the right side. I'm gonna approximate like, yeah, something like that. It should connect right around there. So basically you're just kind of marking out like these quadrants of where your off shoulder panel should be connecting to the rest of your sweater. So that's approximately, I'm gonna start, you know, putting my hook through some of these stitches over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and shimmy that slip knot onto my hook. I'm gonna slip that through. And from here, essentially, you are going to start slip stitching and seaming your sweater together. And again, what you are most likely gonna find is that each row is not going to perfectly line up with a row on the inside of your sweater. And so these stitch markers are there for a reason. It's so that you can better approximate um, where to connect things. And sometimes, honestly, the easiest method is just to kind of like stack your panels and insert your hook and seam. 
This is the final and complete product. It is a beautiful fitted off the shoulder silhouette. Now I have this in a white cashmere version and this is a gray wool version. Both are so very comfy, they fit beautifully and I can't wait to style them in my future outfits. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would really appreciate if you would consider becoming a patron on my Patreon. Make sure to leave any questions you might have about the tutorial in the comments, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!